All right, welcome back. This is the sec second in two lectures that we're going to have on the Galton Watson branching process model. Okay, Galton for Francis Galton, uh, an English statistician and, and mathematician, uh, famous for uh, the the interplay between nature and nurture, and then fingerprint analysis, and Reverend Henry William Watson who actually solved uh, the the problem mathematically. Uh, but recall from the last lecture that we have e of t, which is the probability that a surname is extinct in t generations, given it initially started with one individual with that surname, and it solved this iterative this iterative equation, this this difference equation, where again the initial uh, synthesis is that you because somebody exists, the the name isn't extinct, so the initial extinction probability is zero. And this f is the moment generating function of the probabilities of having 0, 1, 2, and so forth offspring. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, and and you know sort of look at some of the properties that this object that this object has, right? So for one, For one, we know that this extinction probability is an increasing sequence, right? Because if your name is extinct in 49 generations, for example, it's going to be extinct in the 50th generation, right? If if all the individuals that can pass that name along are gone, uh, they're going to be gone forever, right? So this is an increasing sequence of extinction probabilities, and we know because it's a probability, it also must be bounded above by 1 for all t, okay? And so we know from calculus or, or analysis that an increasing and bounded sequence has a limit, right? So therefore, this sequence has a limiting value. And we're going to call this limiting value E star. Okay? And this E star is the long-term extinction probability um, of the surname. And, and 1 minus E star is the long-term probability that the name, that the surname lives indefinitely. Okay, so th those are two interesting things, right? If, if E star is is one, then that means that your name is uh, sure to go extinct. Um, if it's smaller than one, then your name will likely have some longevity uh, associated uh, with it. Now, now let's a little bit more um, about e some properties of E star. Another thing to note that is if the limit as t approaches infinity of e sub t equals e star, which is what we've shown, then we also know that the limit as t approaches infinity of e of t minus 1 will also equal e star, which means that e star solves this fixed point equation. e star is equal to f of e star. Okay, so really, the the properties of E star then all generate from the the properties of F. So what what properties does F have? What does 
F look like? Okay, so let's let's start discussing those things. Right? So, for example, since all of the probabilities associated with offspring sum to 1, if we look at f of 1, that's just going to be, again, the sum of all of those probabilities And so, therefore, that's going to be 1. So, 1 is a fixed point of F. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the particular fixed point we're looking at, but it is indeed a fixed point uh, of F. Another thing to notice is that if you look at f again, f of e sub t minus 1, as a function of e sub t minus 1, we can look using calculus and the fact that this is a convergent power series. We can look at some properties of this. For example, f prime of e sub t minus 1 is going to be p1 plus 2p2 e sub t minus 1, plus another bunch of positive terms. So we do know that this thing is an increasing function. And if we look at the second derivative, and again, I'm assuming the first few probabilities here are positive. The, the idea is that you have some non-zero probability of having 0, 1, or 2 offspring. If you look at the second derivative, this is going to look like 2p2 plus a bunch of terms that are also positive. And so this entire thing is positive. And so not only is f increasing, but f is also concave up. Okay, so what is this going to look like then in terms of solving this fixed point problem? Well, if we draw a graph... of e versus f of e. Again, we've already said that 1 is a fixed point, so the point 1, 1 is on this graph. And we also know that the y-intercept of f is going to be p0. And so it moves in an increasing concave up way from the point 0, p0 to 1, 1. Okay, and there's really only two ways in which a fixed point can occur here with this intersection. It can either occur with the line E is equal to E intersecting that way, or in another case, we can draw another little graph where, again, if you have something maybe that's a little bit uh, less so there, you could have it only intersecting at the point 1, 1 in terms of being a fixed point. And so notice in the leftmost case, this is E star, which is less than 1, which means that your surname is not sure to go extinct. So some possibility of a long, persistent... surname. And in this case, E star is exactly 1, in which case your surname goes extinct. Okay? And the differences between these two scenarios is precisely the slope of the, of the line tangent to F at the point 1, 1. In the leftmost case over here, that slope is greater than 1 because this line here has to eventually bend underneath the straight line with slope 1, and then in order to come back to this point here, it needs to have a slope greater than 1 in order to intersect again, 
whereas over here, in this rightmost, the slope of the graph is less than, the slope of the line tangent to the graph of f is less than 1, and hence there's really no reason for it to bend underneath the straight line with slope 1. And we'll show that mathematically here in the next slide. And what that means biologically. So notice if we look at f prime of e of t minus 1, that's going to be p, p1 plus 2p2 e sub t minus 1 plus 3p3 e sub t minus 1 squared plus, and continuing there, using some calc 1 and the fact that that's a absolutely convergent power series. We plug in 1, we're going to get P1 plus 2P2 plus 3P3. This is exactly the expected number of male offspring. with a given surname. Right? Which makes a ton of sense, right? So we, we go back to the graph that we had before, and we end up with this very concise, very intuitive conclusion here for these Galton-Watson process models. We have that if f prime of 1, which we'll often call the basic reproduction number, is greater than 1, then E star is less than 1, or 1 minus E star is greater than 0, which means that you have some probability of persistence. Now, it's not, sh it's not sure, but at least there's a there, the probability of your name living indefinitely isn't zero. Whereas if f prime of 1, which is equal to r0, and we're going to include the equal case, is less than or equal to 1, then e star is 1, and 1 minus e star is 0. And, th and in that case, your name goes extinct with probability 1. Okay, and this is the R0 is, is frequently, frequently comes up uh, in the literature for epidemiology. Uh, and, you know, again, it's, it's this idea of replacing yourself. If the average male re more than replaces himself uh, in the family lineage, then you have some non-zero opportunity that the family will live on forever. If he, if the average male cannot, right, so you have this outcome, then the name isn't going to be particularly long-lived. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and look at, like, just a, a very simple uh, example of one of these. Okay, so let's look at the example where the probability of having no children or male children is 1 over 6, the probability of having 1 is 3 over 6, or 1 half of the time. And the probability of having 2 is 2 sixths. So 1 out of every 3 male children has 2 male children. Okay, in this case, your f of e sub t minus 1 is going to be, well, 1 over 6 plus 3 over 6 e sub t minus 1 plus 2 over 6 e sub t minus 1 squared. Okay, if we look at solving the fixed point problem then, so solve e star is equal to f of e star. Well, f of e star is, well, we factor out a 1 over 6, you're going to have 1 plus 3 e star plus 2 e star squared, and, you know, 
We were told we met, we were told we we're going to have to factor polynomials one day. We go ahead and factor this. We're going to end up with 2e star minus 1 times e star minus 1. There's again that e is equal to e star equals 1 fixed point and and you end up with e star the one that's not equal to 1 is equal to 1 half which means that 1 minus e star is also equal to 1 half so in this in this particular scenario where you have one male offspring half the time two male offspring a third of the time notice here if we take the first derivative of f We're going to have 3 over 6 plus 4 over 6 e. If we plug in 1, we're going to end up with 7 over 6, which is greater than 1. So we should expect this probability to be strictly smaller than 1. And we, of course, do. Okay? All right. Well, thank you for listening. And hopefully, uh, as you sort of continue your path in mathematical biology, you find uh, branching process models, uh, starting with the canonical case of the Galton-Watson process, uh, a, a useful tool moving forward.